Ted Getty. Okay, let's take. Let's take Ted Getty. See this little short back thing. He's so crazy. These guys are almost six months old. Johnny, you wanna go? You wanna go, Johnny? We just have to take off a little fat dog. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna babysit him that much with all these other ones. So, we're in the middle of Kansas. Flyover state. Yeah. We've done all these things with dogs. Amy and Jamie. Amy and Jamie. They're in the same obedience class. Both have dark hair, blue eyes. You can barely tell our voices apart on the phone. But I was Blue River. And and I was established and done all these things. We met, we met at obedience class actually. Dog class and Newer from there, and uh, we had a lot of fun in obedience class. And Amy and I probably, we probably should have stayed shopping and doing those sort of things because that's what we did best. But people get this screwed up. We, she did her thing. Okay. I did my thing. Um, our recipes weren't exactly alike. You, okay. we can have, all have the same components, but where you put the sugar and how much sugar you put in the cake might be different than me. Yeah. You know, you may measure all your ingredients. I may have made this cake so many times, I'm just dumping it, it always comes out good. Yeah. But you might try to dump it all like that. And it don't come off so good. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, both of us, um, Amy, Jamie, both from Marysville, doing this crazy new dog thing, like nobody knew what it was. Like they're mutts, they're mongrels. So, I was Blue River. I said, you know, you have to have a kill name, whatever. So, she thought about it, she became Blue Rock. Okay. So, now we're even more similar, you know. I mean, we never, we never were anything different. Blue River, Blue Rock. But we were constantly mixed up. But there was a time when I even tried to merge. We tried to merge together. So, we started. And we decided we'd be shorty bulls, and we had this little forum, you know, going, and everybody was real nice on it. We were all real nice on it. Nice dog, that's cute, la, 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 la. Well, I got bored and sick of that. You know, so I started being a little more truthful. Yeah. Well, and then that wasn't very cool. So they said, you know, you just play nice in the sandbox. And, I mean, I, it, was, it was polite and stuff, but... I mean, look at us now today. Does nothing for a breed. That does nothing. That does nothing. You can be nice and respectful. Yeah. And and there's a way to do it, but you cannot say the dog is nice when it's when you know it's not. when it's not. You can't be. You have to be very selective about your words. And you know you can't be like it's garbage. But you have to be truthful about it. Nice dog. Nice dog. Nice dog doesn't do anything for a breed. So anyway, that's where our first little things kind of started to unwind and then then it all unwound into a heap on the floor and I I left yeah. and said I'm going to go on my own and it was brand new we were like the only ones doing anything like this and I was pretty ballsy and I said I'm not I'm not keeping any secrets about this because it's too much work and I don't care and you know and my motto for a long time was, give the recipe, I'll still kick your ass. So let's try to build this dog. And that was fun. I was like throwing out a little challenge. And the reason the recipe wasn't a secret, why do you think it was? You know, everybody's like always oh, so secretive about that stuff. And it's okay to be. I mean, the secret is in the individual dogs you use. Yeah. That's what it is. And where you put it in there. It's okay to say what it is but it's about what you start with and where you're going with that. You have to really care a lot. And the more experienced you are at things like anatomy and what a correct body part does and 
what it does over time, the better off you'll start, the better off you'll be. If I base mine on English Bulldogs, and you base yours on the Staffy Bull part of this, do you think our stuff's going to look alike? They're, they're going to be different dogs. Oh, yeah, dogs. Yeah. Our dogs do not look alike. If you think two dogs look alike, you're just not looking hard enough. They don't. They're as individual as people. You know, I like bullier features. Um, never let myself go on the bully stuff until I had the whole thing established to my liking. It's a matter of experience. Judy, her, her. Okay, come on, Judy. Well, I'm on the tail end of this now. You know? Yeah. I, I've been, I've made it this far. I made it, and I've, I can tell you about good times, bad times, mad times, sad times. And, and you'll say, well, what makes you keep going? I don't really know some days. I don't know because, you know, I have kids and the dogs and a job and, you know. So you have to, you have to know that you really want to do this. It's easy to lose that sometimes. Yeah. You know, like in a program when it's not going the way you want it. And it's never just smooth sailing. Yeah. Ever. You gotta keep on that. You know, like if you want bone, you gotta break your bone. You can't just coast. And be like, where did it all go? You were, you were sleeping. It's just like a way of life to me. But it's a way of life I enjoy. Tell me, you know, you should get down to six dogs. Or like, I don't know what to do with that. I've, I've never done it that way. I mean, that's like taking half my palette of colors away and telling me to make the same picture. It's like taking the mechanics, all his tools except a hammer and a screwdriver to fix the air conditioner. I don't know. I can't do it. You know, um, people ask me why I don't save, save, store semen. Everybody, you know, almost stores semen and I'm not going that way. I'm going that way. I'm not going backward. I'm going forward. Yeah. I'm just going forward. Um, that's what you do when you build a breed. That's why I think real breeders and, and a number of dogs, they, it's imperative you have to have that. That makes you self-sufficient, basically. Because what we do in breeding is you know, we're, we're juggling, we're balancing, we're fixing, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. complementing each other. But I don't want to rely on everybody else to agree with me and, and do that. That's the, the biggest hardship on people today. You've got to make a breed. It's hard to do with a small number. Do you have that kind of time? Yeah. It's, it's time consuming. Because you have to keep it. You have to watch it grow. But I wanted to do that. If, if you don't want to do that, you won't make a breed. That should come natural. I kept whole litters sometimes. And I was lucky to have the, the space to do it. Yeah. And it's muddy. If you want to breed, be a good breeder, get the breed dogs, okay? And I'm not talking about, 
you're being the responsible breeder for your one litter a year, two litters a year. Okay, that's neat. Yeah. That's real cool. But you have to breed dogs to teach yourself. If you can breed two, if you can breed away, everything on the internet, that that's not breeding dogs. Mm. I, I don't care how many times it happened or whatever. It's got to happen to you. You have to do it yourself to really thoroughly learn it. And statistics are important. Two litters a year, that's not really teaching. No. That's not teaching, you know, it's practicing, okay. But, you know, that's a lifetime to get to 20 litters. And it's very taboo to say this today. To say, yeah. you go out and breed some dogs, that is straight taboo. For everybody that thinks that's taboo, I apologize. You know, only do that if you have the space and time. And and I think I think breeders, big breeders that do that, I think they're kind of becoming extinct in our world today. If I'm into, you know, showing, proving, 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 proving. You know, that was what I did for so long. Mm -hmm. And now I've proved it so much. I mean, you can look at it and see it. And if you can't. I don't know. You're not looking very hard. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I proved it so much, you know, and I've I've committed so much of my life to this. My kids didn't even have a choice. They committed their life to it too because I did, you know. And I want to prove it was so much more, so much more than just a designer dog. Shorty bulls, as a breed, on as a whole, um, are ideally the best when it comes to family dynamics. Um, they read people well. They, they learn boundaries extremely easy. Um, you know, they're creatures of habit. With the right amount of repetition, you can teach them to do just about anything. Um, they can be calm when they're inside. When they're outside, it's time to play. Uh, they have really great on-off switches, I like to say. Um, and I think that that is extremely important when you are putting dogs into a family environment. It can run, it yeah. can pull weight, it can it can do agility, you know, it can do all those things, it can swim. I thought it was amazing. Maybe some swim. Amazing. <laughs> it can climb hills. You know, to me it's like the ultimate little you still like bully dogs. It's got a lot of function. I got my first shorty bull in 2011. His name is Cassius Clay, a.k.a. the GOAT, Blue River's greatest of all time. I told Jamie when I got that dog, I said, Jamie, I'm going to destroy the show ring. I'm going to dominate. And that's what he did. He was undefeated for like 40 shows in a row. He still to this day holds the most records for our breed and, and best of shows with over 50. He's produced dogs that did that, and it's all based on the river. So no matter what I breed now, a river will always run through it. I'd rather be thought of as a canine artist. Not just a dog breeder. Not just a dog breeder. Not just a dog breeder, but that's what we do with great dogs. And I like to change the view on, is that terrible? Well, can you imagine a world without dogs? Without breeders, there's no dogs. I went to Westminster last year, and it was interesting to go. Everybody should go to that. The Westminster? Go to that. Yeah, it's, it's good. You know, we can learn so much from other uh, breeds of dogs and other avenues and for some reason in our community, we have this, like, we have to stay here and we can't go over there. I don't know if, if you do so much, but it used well, I, to be like I that. I love level. dogs. So I'll yeah. go, I, if they got four legs, then right. it barks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I know. probably going to go see it. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's great. We should go see all of that yeah. stuff, you know. And we can learn from all of that. You know, but we're constantly learning. Yeah. And to be a cutting-edge breeder, it's a must. But it's also, you do it anyway if you are a cutting edge breeder because you're intrigued. That doesn't ever go away, that you're, you're intrigued with dogs. I mean, it, it doesn't if you're really a, really a dog person. What do you do? I, I like to think of uh, the program that you have as more than maybe the dog. Your program's a reflection of you. Your program reflects what you are because it's yours what you put into it. And you should be humble as a beginner. You, you definitely should, you know, and, and grow with that. But I know I'll never have another breed.
great. This is this is it for me. I love it. It's yeah. perfect. I don't know who this wouldn't be perfect for. A lot of people now they want they're breeding the dogs and but uh, if you got a Blue River Shorty Bull, you got the real deal. And I can attest to that because nobody was talking about putting these dogs together 25 years ago. But trust me, it was in her mind. So, God bless you, Jamie. So from when you started, back in the day when you were like just doing this for you, mm -hmm. to now, what do, you, how do you, what do you think about that? You have hundreds of people around the world reading Read thousands of people around the world reading something that I you, know. you created. I know. I know. I don't even know. It's crazy because I remember the first ones that I sold, and you know, there was no papers. There was. You know, I met the people, and there was no expectations, no papers. Cute little fat puppy. Let's go. It was good. Yeah. And then it graduated from there. And then called them teddy bear bulls for a while. Teddy bear bulls? <laughs> that didn't stick, huh? No. <laughs> Not, I, that didn't stick. That didn't stick. You know, we were trying out names and stuff. It didn't stick. But, yeah, I never thought it'd be like this. You know? But the one thing that I did want is I always wanted them to be so special. And, and they are and so unique. You know, every one of these is like a limited edition piece. And that's what I love. A, a collectible thing that it was hard to get. Hardly hard to get, but, you know, it wasn't common. Yeah. And you got to choose it. And you got to, to learn about it and work for it. And finally, you got it. So I treasured it. And that's how I always wanted them to be. A treasure and yeah. special. When you see the shorty bull in five years from now, you know it's growing. Yeah. And it's going to continue to grow. I really think it's the ultimate dog for the here and now. Okay. Okay. And not everybody's going to agree with me, but if they don't, it's because they haven't been around the right shorty bull. I think it's great. I think they're going to be around for a long time. Um, uh, as, as long as Jamie's involved in it, I know that the breed standards will be what they need to be. Um, I think they're here to stay. Uh, we just think it hasn't been introduced to the right amount of people. Uh, we don't feel that uh, a lot of people know that the shorty bull exists. And a lot of people don't know what a shorty bull is. And if you're like me, who've been breeding for 15 years, and you've heard of a shorty bull, but haven't had the opportunity to see a shorty bull, pet a shorty bull, lay hands on a shorty bull, then you don't know what you're missing. And myself and Jamie uh, wholeheartedly believe that the more people that we can get to interact with the shorty bulls and understand where they came from and what they are, we believe that we'll get more people falling in love with the shorty bull. They're just so nice for so many people. You get the beauty of a dog and, and the fun, but it's small, it's economical. So we're gonna see lots more of them. You get tired of waiting. Seems like it takes forever. But then when it hits, it's like explosions. Yeah. But uh, right now, we're getting a lot of interest from a lot of, a lot of interest from a lot of new people, different people, people that had seen one, that just hadn't seen one that caught their eye. Mm -hmm. It's just a cool breed and uh, it's just been a real blessing and I've been happy being a part of it and, and I'm just really excited to see uh, where the shorty bull goes uh, in the future. Jamie, she's always reading, she's always learning, she's always trying to better the breed, empower other breeders, empower other people and educate other people. Uh, on the breed. So to me that's fascinating because it, I've been breeding for 15 years, like I said, in the last eight months to a year that I've been conversating with Jamie on a daily basis. 
I've been able to learn so much that I can contribute and add to my own program as it pertains to the American Bully and my Shorty Bull Breeder program and just really, you know, just be an overall breeder all together. Have you ever, have you ever brought the, um, the Shorty Bull to the, to the AKC? Has that ever been an uh, idea that you had? I think someday we'll be there whether I want it to be or not. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. But right now, I like it here. I like it here where we're young and happening and, you know, and we like it for all these different reasons and I know we all growl around about the community, you know, a lot. But really, I'm staying here. I like it here. I don't know why I fit better here, you know. Now, the dogs are breeding true to type. You don't have the skin problems. You don't have the eye problems. Cause you use all the right dogs. I mean, all dogs are going to have certain problems, but I know for a fact she did everything she could to make sure that these dogs were genetically superior. Like say, comparison to the English, the English average life expectancy is eight years. Shorty bulls are going to live a lot longer than that as a general rule. Uh, they're going to be healthier and happier, uh, breathe easier. Um, than your average bulldog. We're just trying to bring that to the masses, man, and let people get to see these dogs for for what they are, man. And it's been pretty amazing, man. I, I can definitely see the difference between my bullies compared to the shorty bulls, man. The shorty bulls, they got to drive for days, they play, they be wearing my bullies out. You know what I'm saying? And they just, they built tough for that, for that type of, uh, that type of lifestyle. Your father taught you a lot and showed you a lot. And if, if your pop was here, if your dad was here right now, mm. what, 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 would, what do you think he would say to you? Oh, I don't know what he'd say. Probably have too many dogs in the house with him. <laughs> Probably was you. You know, um, I don't know what he'd say. He would probably be like, he did, huh? And he'd look him over and, you know, which one can do this? Can I do that? Can I do that? You know, and then it, then if it all passed, it's, you know, he'd be like, well, do that again. Do that three times. You know, because it, it was always proven with him. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was his way of challenging me and, you know, and keeping it going. And Yeah, I wish you could have seen this. Uh, I don't know. But the, but the thing is, if my dad was here, you guys wouldn't even know me. I'm telling you, you wouldn't know me. <laughs> yeah, he was, he would, he was something else. It was hilarious, but he had a wealth of knowledge and, you know, you know me as probably as Ellen's daughter. She just stands there beside him and hands him the dogs and stuff. I'm going to tell you the secret. What? Your mom said that he would have been proud. Really? <laughs> oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> that makes you cry. Well, thank you guys for coming now. What is a shorty bull? That's the baddest dog out there today. You better get you one.